care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. that we are so glad that you came to church this morning and we're glad that those who are worshiping with us streaming you could have went anywhere online but we thank God that you're worshiping with us and we'd like to say good morning and welcome to Aimwell Baptist Church aka the well so as usual we're going to start off with the scripture Psalms 100 and it reads make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. He is he that have made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Come on and praise God for the good news. Hallelujah. We ask that you come on and stand with us if you're able to stand and praise the Lord with us because he's just that kind of God. How many of you know that he's worthy of all the praise this morning? Come on, and well. I need you to come on and praise the Lord with us this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, Lord. How many of you can testify that he keeps on doing good things for you? Yeah, what yeah. about over here? Does he keep on doing good things for you? How many of you know that you didn't wake yourself up this morning? God woke you up and brought you. 
brought you into the house of the Lord. So we're going to give him all the praise that do him this morning. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And I praise you, Lord. Yes, I do. Lord, I do. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together like this.
another thank you. Hallelujah. So praise team, I want you to sing it first. And then I want you guys to help us sing it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because God inhabits the praises of his people. Am I right this morning? Soprano, I want you to sing. Stay. 
this morning. We are sitting here, but they are in distress over there. You said that we were our brother's keeper. We know that you know what's going on, but we ask that you would bless those people over in Ukraine right now. Oh God, you said that there will be wars and rumors of wars, but oh Lord, we know that you are in control. Bless their lives this morning. Bless those who have been killed, who have lost loved ones, who have been separated from their family. Now, Lord, we pray for the sick and the shut in here at Angwell. Those of us who have lost loved ones that were dear to us that are not here with us today. We pray, oh God, that this mighty girl would be a blessing to our families and that we would not lose anybody by our shooting this week. But most of all, oh God, we pray for this service that it would be all that you would have it to be. We pray for our staff here at the church. We pray for our choirs right now. But most of all, oh God, we're praying for our families and our family members, that as we leave this place, you would protect us and put your strong arm around us that keep us safe through all of this confusion. There's so much shooting going on, so, so much killing, but we pray for peace this morning. Yes, Lord. We pray, oh God, that you would heal our hearts. You, yes. would, you would touch our young people. Hallelujah. Let them know, oh God, that you're still a God. Yes, Lord. That sit high, but you look low. Let them know that they don't need a gun. All they need is just a little more Jesus. We thank you now, Lord, that you're still God. And we pray for our pastor. We pray, oh God, as we get ready to go into his installation, that we may have a joyous time. Hallelujah. We thank you now, oh God, for you woke us up one more day. My favorite saying is you gave us another chance to straighten up what we messed up. 
all of us in there know that we have not done and said all that we should have done. But we come laying on the altar this morning. We come like David. We repent of our sins. Ask that you will forgive us, oh God. Pray for our preachers. Pray for Reverend Longmouth. But most of all, I'm praying for my children and my grandchildren. That's going to be in this parade. Bless them. Put your arm around them. That no hurt, harm, and danger will come to them. Now, Lord, we thank you. You didn't have to do what you did. But early this morning, early this morning, you got us up in our right mind. We just come to say, like Grandmama said, much obliged. Now, Lord, as we get ready to go in your service, let your Holy Spirit dwell here today. In Jesus' name. Let every heart say it with me. In Jesus' name. There's power in the name of Jesus. One, one more time. In Jesus' name. It said, at the name of Jesus, yeah. every, every knee shall bow, shall bow. Yes, and every tongue shall confess. Yes, Lord. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord again this morning? I don't know about you, but when I, when I look at the news and I look at all the things that are going on, the fact that he woke us up this morning yeah, yeah. ought to take on new meaning. How many are just glad that you woke up this morning? Amen. Amen. We'll give God praise. You may be seated today. Good morning, Aimwell. Good morning. Good morning. It's so great to see you all. Uh, this morning on this Joe Kane Sunday, Amen. And uh, I know, I know it's Joe Kane Sunday, so we got to get in and get out of here, uh, so we can let you get to your parade and festivities, Amen, <laughs> Amen, Amen. Well, listen, just a few announcements I have for you today. I'm excited again um, to share this word with you. I'm I'm doing something I've never done here today. I'm preaching a first ser- first person narrative message today. Uh, that's going to be different, but I certainly believe God has something to share with us today. Uh, by the way of announcements, Sister Alfreda Williams, she, I told you last week she lost a brother. I don't know if she's here today. She's not here uh, this morning, uh, but she funeralized, funeralized her brother yesterday. And so we want to be praying for her. Amen. We're we'll praying for her. Um, tragedies are simply commonplace. There's so much going on. Uh, this, this is why we got to keep praying for one another, keep supporting each other, keep loving each other, because uh, it's enough going on out there 
Uh, amen, somebody. It's enough going on out there. Uh, so we need to cover each other in prayer. Also, I'm very proud to announce that our Sunday school made a generous donation of $420 to the Foster Child Fund. So would you help me thank God for Derek Smith as well? Come on, let's thank God. Amen. Sharing that love and Aimwell is rich in outreach uh, monthly at the shelter. Uh, and what I understand, this is an annual thing that the Sunday school does. Uh, you ought to be glad to be a part of a church who believes in outreach and reaching those that are less fortunate. Come on, let's give God praise for that. Also, continue to pray for Sister Pinky Carter and her family uh, during this time. And so we can continue to pray strength for them, Guanita, and all of, all of that. And so we want to be praying for them uh, as well. I'm also uh, glad to have Brother Walter Williams here today. Amen. Would you give God praise? God bless you today. Good to have you. Longtime member. Amen. Great to have you uh, with us here this morning. Listen, family, how many of y'all came to have a, just a little bit of church? Did y'all come for real, for real? I can't wait. I can't wait to share what God has to say uh, today. And uh, I'm just excited. I want to thank God for our, uh, our frontline ministry. They are dressed in the African, covering their post. Uh, thank you so much for doing what you do. And uh, while we're clapping, let's thank God for our security ministry as well as they continue to keep us safe. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, listen, y'all clapping like that, that crowd on Coming to America. Sexual chocolate. Y'all just did that. No, no, no. All right. Come on. Let's give God praise for real. Okay. There you go. There you go. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I want y'all to get loud like y'all are at the parade. Amen. 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 All right. Listen, I want you to give God praise and bless God for the hardest working praise team in Mobile County. Let's give God praise for the Aimwell Missionary Baptist Church praise team.
from the hand of my enemy. I can stand my ground with the Lord on my side. For the snares they have said will not succeed. If you believe it, say you. Ooh, yeah. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. Well, well, no. Although they said a snare just a trap, it won't work. It won't. There just ain't one. Ah, there just ain't one. Yeah. Well, no. Say it again. Come on, y'all. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. What the no? I need to feel it in my spirit. Come on, y'all. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. Ooh, what the no? Hey, 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 come on. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. There just. Shall prosper. He won't work. Say no weapon formed against me. Shall prosper. He won't work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. said it won't prosper that mean they, they may plot they may talk they may do all that stuff but the good news is no matter how many weapons are formed the promise is that it will not work <laughs> yeah see you can't you can't worship on that song unless you've had some enemies who you didn't do anything to I'm, I'm talking about those people who are after you, you ain't did nothing to them. You ain't taking advantage of them. But they're just after you because you got an anointing on your life. But let me tell you, I don't care what they're doing to you on that job. No weapon. I said no weapon. I said no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that... God, for whatever reason, God, you still woke us up this morning, started us on our way. God, thank you for things being as good as they are, because we know that they could be worse. It could be so much worse. And God, thank you, God, that though that there were some weapons that were formed against us, thank you that it didn't work. 
We know it didn't work, God, because instead of it taking us out, we're still here lifting up holy hands, still declaring that this is the day that you've made. So, God, thank you for keeping us. Thank you for how you continue to do things in and through our lives. God, we come confessing that we've fallen short of your glory, for your word says, all have sinned and come short of your glory. But, God, thank you for another chance. Thank you that you're not the God of a second chance because we messed that up years ago. But thank you that you're the God that keeps giving chances. God, we thank you for another chance. Now, God, we come confessing to God that we need a word from you, a word that challenges us, a word that convicts us, a word that ultimately helps us to change. Give us that word today. I pray continue that the psalmist that you simply let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. One more time, if you love the Lord, put those hands together. Amen. Would you grab your Bibles and stand with me this morning? Grab your Bibles and stand with me this morning. Grab your Bibles and stand with me this morning if you can. Genesis chapter 3, we're continuing. We are towards the end. We have literally, with this installment, one additional installment left in this series. Have you been blessed by this series this month? Genesis 3, verses 9 through 13. 9 through 13. I want to continue. Uh, we've been getting to the root of the problem. And we finally made it to the root of it. Today I'm going to share a special message today. Genesis chapter 3 verses 9 through 13. And it says like this, Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, the woman who you gave me. He said it. I didn't say it. He said, the woman who you gave me to be with, she gave me of the tree and I ate it. Trying to please her. That's what the text say. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the Lord said, the serpent deceived me and I ate it. I want to talk about again getting to the root of the problem. <laughs> you may be seated today. God says, where y'all at? Where y'all at? Where y'all at? That we were hiding because we, we, we knew we were naked. Then he says, who told you that? Who told you you were naked? Uh, <laughs> this whole series, brothers and sisters, we have been getting to the root of the problem. And now, as I said a moment ago, we are finally at the root of the problem. And brothers and sisters, it was there while I was getting ready to preach this message was there in the private moments of my, my moments of prayer and preparation that I received a knock on the door of my imagination. Uh, it, it was a familiar knock, y'all. It was a knock that I've heard before. And guess who it was? It was the Holy Spirit. He said to me, Pastor Trey, uh, this entire month, you've been telling Adam's story. You've been telling Adam's story and Adam and Eve's story to tell uh, aim well how to get to the root of the problem. I said, yeah, you're right. But then he simply said, he said, well, Pastor Trey, if you don't mind, while you've been telling Adam's story, why don't you let Adam come tell his story? Says one thing to hear from you, but let, let the church on Joe Kane Sunday hear what Adam has to say. Good morning, aim well. My name is Adam. You've been hearing about me this entire month, brothers and sisters, and you've been hearing about it, and, and you've been hearing about getting to the root of the problem. If you really look at our lives, me and Eve had some problems. 
Because what we discover is that while God put us together, it takes more than that to keep us together. I wish I had some married people that can talk right there. It testifies one thing when God brings you together, but it takes more than just God to keep you together. And brothers and sisters, I I just got to ask this one question. Has anybody ever been interrogated? Maybe maybe not legally. (laughs) By some detective or some law enforcement official. But maybe you've been interrogated by a spouse. Loved one. A friend. Have you ever been interrogated? Have you ever? No, no, come on, talk to me here. Have y'all ever been interrogated? But here's my thing, y'all. I was interrogated too, but my interrogation was nothing like y'all's. Because, see, when I got interrogated in Genesis 3, the person interrogating me, not only was he asking me questions, but he already knew the answers before he ever asked the questions. I got interrogated by God. Can you imagine how it must have felt that day in the garden to have God? interrogate you he already knows everything and since he knows everything then he why does he ask us a question God doesn't need information but God wants to check our hearts <laughs> Can I tell you brothers and sisters I I got interrogated by God when I got interrogated by God y'all I was sitting there in that chair wondering what Have I gotten myself into? Have you ever gotten to that place where you told God, God, if you get me out of this one time. Oh, come on. Y'all acting real. Y'all acting real bougie today. Have you ever made one of those promises? I call call those rock bottom promises. That's that's when when you say, God, God, if you get me out of this, I promise you I ain't drinking no more. Okay, y'all, y'all, act, y'all act real holy at Ainwell Missionary Baptist Church. I'm talking about those rock-bottom confessions. And I was in that place this, this morning. I was in that place, and God asked me a series of questions. One question had a two-part answer to it. And he asked me this question, y'all, and here's the first question he asked. He says, where are you? Now, wait a minute, God. If you looking high, what you mean? Where am I? Notice how I replied, y'all. I told God, listen, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I knew I was naked, and I hid myself. See, the thing about God's first question to me, y'all, God was not asking for information purposes. He was not asking me where I was because he wanted to know my location. God was asking me that question because he could detect that there is some separation. Are y'all with me here? It's not that he didn't know where I was. It's just that he knew that there had been a separation. Because God obviously knew that whenever you sin, it separates you from God. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, it's so easy to be separated from them. Can I tell you how I got separated? I got separated, y'all, because I got lost in a little bite. Can I tell you? I got lost in a little bite. I got lost in it. Text says that Eve ate it, and then I ate it. Well, well, how that works, T, is that the word ate in the Hebrew does not mean we just took one bite. But we kept on eating until there was no more. Isn't that how sin is? You can never just get one bite. And, And it seems like The more you bite, oh, y'all getting real holy on your pastor today. 
You just can't take one bite. Ask somebody who's ever been addicted to drugs. The way they got addicted is because they had one hit. Ask somebody who's ever been involved with some infidelity. They'll tell you it started with one little flirtatious conversation. Ask the business, business person who starts a habit of stealing from their own business. It's because that little taking a little bit turns into a lot of bit because you can never get, get comfortable with just one, one bite. And I got lost in my bite. Have you ever been lost? I'm talking about so lost that you forget that what you're doing is wrong. Y'all ain't going to talk to me today. Uh, because all of us have a tendency to get lost at times. And what I discovered that when I got, I got so lost in this sin, y'all, that I discovered this one lesson that disobedience leads to distance from God. Can I tell you, our disobedience puts, puts distance between us and God. Some of us oftentimes will complain that I don't feel church and I don't feel God. But can I tell you that that is an indictment not against church. It's an indictment against you. Because when there is distance between you and him, there are some things that just don't feel the same. That when there is distance between you and God, then sometimes the worship doesn't get your heart. And can I tell you, it's not on the praise team, it's not on the pastor, it's not on anybody else, but you got to admit that there's some distance between you and, and him. And maybe, brothers and sisters, that is why we need to guard ourselves. <laughs> because can I tell you, whatever it is that you want so much, if it means you disobeying God, you ought to make up in your mind, I will not disobey him to satisfy somebody else. Because here's the thing, y'all. If you got to disobey God to get it, you have to continue to disobey God to keep it. And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, whenever it is God's will, it's his bill. But whenever it's your will, it is your bill. And what I discovered is that I put distance between me and God because I wanted to do what I wanted to do. The second question he asked me in this interrogation, y'all, after I told him, God, I thought I was naked. Me and Eve is naked, Lord. And then I, I said, God, that, that, that's, that's why I hid myself. I was afraid that I was naked. And then he asked me this startling question. He says, who told you? If you allow me to put it in hood terms, where you get that from? God says, who told you that? Hmm. Then he says, have you eaten from the tree that I told you not to eat from? <laughs> Notice, y'all, my answer. I said, God, you know that chick you gave me? That one, that bone of my bone. She the reason that I ate this fruit. Now, the problem with my answer is that God was asking for an explanation. But what I did was give God an excuse. He was asking for a direct answer, but I only offer God an excuse. You do know the difference between the explanation and the excuse, right? An explanation tells the whole story. An excuse only tells your version of the story. And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, 
Sometimes we are guilty of giving excuses. Because we only tell the side of the story that paints us in the best light. Y'all ain't going to say that right there. And what I didn't realize, y'all, that God was asking for the full story. And the full story is this. I did something I didn't supposed to do. And what ended up happening, I discovered that I was naked. Ah, What you mean? (laughs) That word naked there in the Hebrew is interesting, y'all, because the word naked literally is connected to the, one of the first words of chapter 3 when it says that the snake was cunning. Naked and cunning are a part of the same Hebrew verb, which means this, that my craftiness ended up allowing me to experience nakedness. What you trying to say, Pastor Trey? That whenever you oppose God, you expose yourself. All right. So you have heard what the Bible says, be not deceived. God ain't mocked. Whatever that you sow, you, you, you're going to reap. And I've discovered this, y'all, when we make up in our mind that we're going to be so bold to do what we want to do anyway, God has a way of taking his covering off of us and exposing us for who we are. Can I tell you, don't you ever get so comfortable? Don't you ever get to a place where you're so comfortable doing what you want to do? Because the same way God has covered you, he will uncover you. And some of y'all ought to be grateful that he did not un- uncover you because some of y'all, come, come on, some of us got to be re- real in here. The only reason why some people have respect for us is because God did not uncover us. Y'all better be careful about getting beside yourself thinking that don't nobody know your dirt. We may not know it, but I promise you God does. But it, God sent me here to tell you that don't you ever get so high that you can forget that you can be exposed to. That's why you can't shout when people get exposed. Because the same covering that got pulled off of them. It's the same covering that can get pulled. Come on, talk to me here. So when you see somebody uncovered, that ain't the time to gloat. That ain't ain't the time to share the post. That's the time to pray for them because the same way they got exposed, you can get exposed too. Christians are some of the worst people to get exposed to because as soon as they found out one thing, Ready to stone you, ready to crucify you. But can I tell you, I ain't got no room to talk about nobody. Because I got enough stuff in my, come on, come on, talk to me. I got enough stuff to ask God to cut, so I can't look down on somebody else. Because nakedness means uncovered. Oh. Mm. And can I tell you? This is why you got to make sure you're humble and and, and you do it God's way. Because I don't care how how well planned you are and how sneaky you think you are. You can't cover yourself. And God has a way of uncovering all of your dirt. And is there anybody here that can thank God that he didn't uncover you? That God knows how to cover you in spite of you. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, but the third question, the third question, the third question is interesting, y'all, because many times y'all been blaming me for why mankind fell. But the truth is, it wasn't just me. Because God asked Eve, he said, Eve, what have you done? (laughs) 
Notice what, what my blue thing said. She said, it was the serpent. And then I ate. Isn't that funny? The first woman didn't know how to apologize. And neither do some. All right. <laughs> yeah. She said the serpent. The serpent. The serpent did it and I, I ate. Here's what's problem. When, when God asked her this, what she didn't understand is what God was asking her for real. He was really asking do you know what you've done? Because sometimes when we make choices in the moment, we don't consider the future cost. Have you ever been there? Where you said something because it felt right at the time, only to discover it had some future ramifications. Some, some, some of y'all have got into fights. That after the fight was over, you realize it really wasn't worth the fight in the first place. And when you think about it, God wants to know, do you know what you've done? Hmm. That, that, that's, that's what he says. But, but notice how Eve and I answer God, y'all. We start playing the blame game. I said it's her fault. She said it's the snake's fault. Wait a minute. I blame her. She blames the snake. The problem with this, y'all, is that we are playing the blame game. Because, see, it's always easier for us to blame others than to blame ourselves. And, Sister Taylor, what I discovered is when God is talking to us, he ain't talking to us about what somebody else did. But God wants to know, what did you do? See, our problem as Christians, we practice this blame game. We blame everybody else for our actions. But when you get to heaven, God ain't going to ask you, what did I do? God ain't going to ask you, what did your sister do? God wants to know, what did you do? Because it depends upon whether or not you're willing to take the blame. Because when I tell you, brothers and sisters, that, 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 that this interrogation showed me this, that me and Eve had a hard time owning our actions. See, I know you see the problem in your life, but have you ever stopped to ask yourself, what part did I play in it? It's easy to talk about what she and he did, ain't it? But the question is, what did you do? See, I, 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 know, I already know when I talk to somebody that when they only tell me what was done to them but can never tell me what they did, I know I'm only getting one side, come on, talk to me here, of the story. And y'all, I, I, what, what, what God was trying to see and test us to see is that can you be real enough to say, I did some stuff. Hmm. Here we are at the root of the problem. And the Bible says that God cursed the snake. Yeah. Told that snake, he said, you know what? Since you, since you want to mess with my children, you're going to have to crawl on your stomach for the rest of your life. That will be enmity between you and mankind. Then he turned to me because, God, you do know that there are always consequences to your choices. That you can't keep doing what you want to do and think it's going to always work out your way. Then God looked at me and said, Adam, you're going to have to struggle. That the ground itself is going to make you sweat and you're going to have to work hard just to have an honest living. Then he told that, 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 that woman of mine, <laughs> he told her, 
that for the rest of her days, childbirth was going to be painful. She was going to have struggles. Because here's the thing, y'all. When we do it our way, God has to show us <laughs> that his way is the only way. That's the root of the problem. He tells us, you know what? <laughs> There's some consequences to your, to your choices. Now, it's Joe Kane Sunday, and I can't just leave you right there. I can't leave you right there. Because not only was there, was there a curse and there are consequences at the root of the tree, but I want to suggest that there are two other things that God put at that tree. Number one, I think the first thing that God put there is a something called grace. You do know what grace is, don't you? That's when God gives you something that you don't deserve. And I know you're trying to show me, say, Adam, what, 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 what was the grace in the text? It's simple. The text says that in the day that you should eat it, you should surely die. But the text says instead of dying, God starts questioning us. Y'all don't know when to shout. I should have died, but instead of dying, God started questioning us. The mere fact that God started questioning us means that God was determined that he wasn't going to quit on us. Notice this, brothers and sisters. We gave him every single reason to turn his back on us. But the good news is that instead of quitting on us, he questioned us because the question means that God wants to give us another chance. And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, why you ought to be giving God praise? It's because he gave you another chance. Because the shout of the day is this, y'all. God is not the God of a certain number of chances. God is the God of another chance. And is there anybody around here that can testify today that God has given you another chance? Come on, let me see that other chance, praise. For the people who know you've done some stuff that you should not have done, you've gone some places that you should not have gone, but is there anybody here that can thank God for another chance? I said he gave you another chance. That's grace. That with as many times as you've let God down, as many times as you've done some stuff, the fact that he woke you up this morning, the fact that he let you get here is an opportunity to thank God for grace through many dangers, toes and slams. I've already come. Come on, let's go ahead and have some church, Terrence. It, it was grace that brought me safe thus far. And great, look at somebody and say, I know about that amazing grace. That that's the only reason why I'm still here is because God's grace is so amazing. Uh, hallelujah today. I said His grace is amazing. It's amazing grace. God says that, that no matter how bad the problem, I still got some grace. What a situation. Yeah. It takes a real church to shout for grace. See, some, some of these folk that be acting like they was born with, a, with, with praying and quoting scriptures, but I got some real people in the house that know that that's plenty of stuff that should have taken you out. But God gave you another, another chance. Lean over and tell somebody, I got grace in my life. Oh, I said, I got grace in my life. Lord, I ain't preached in about six weeks. I said, I got grace in my life. Yeah. Uh, Y'all stay right there. I'm coming to get you. Uh, but not only is there grace at the tree. But I've discovered that there's also mercy at the tree. Let me give it to y'all. 
Because most of you have been told the wrong information. Most of y'all have been told that in Genesis chapter 3, God curses everybody. But if you read the text, the only person he cursed was the snake. Y'all don't know when to get happy. I said, we've been told that he cursed everybody. But the only person he cursed was the snake. Now, don't you know me and Eve deserve the curse too? But instead of cursing us, he cursed just the snake. And don't you know why God didn't curse us? I asked God, God, why didn't you curse us like you did the snake? He said, I never curse what I intend to save. Is there anybody here that can thank God that you ain't got a curse on your life? And can I tell you something? Some of y'all ain't shouting yet. Maybe you holding your shout for the parade, but I want you to release that shout before you get out of here. And here's the, here's the real shout, y'all. Because some of y'all are saying, well, Adam and Eve, both of y'all deserve the curse. So what did God do with the curse that was meant for you? I'm so glad y'all want to know that question. The reason why God didn't put the curse on me, because he put the curse on his son. Because the Bible says, <laughs> the Bible says that curse be he who hangs on a tree. And so that simply means one dark Friday, Jesus, he got on the cross. And when he got on that cross, he got on that cross with the curse that was meant for me. But not only did he get on the cross for my curse, but he got on the cross with the curse that was meant for you. Do I have a witness in here? He, was, he died on that cross. And the Bible says that one dark Friday, they took my Jesus to an old rugged cross. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulders. And can I tell you the good news? He did die. Look at somebody and say, he died. I said, he died till the sun refused to shine. He died until the moon was dripped down with the blood. He died until the earth began to quake like a drunken man. Look at somebody and say, he did die. Can I tell y'all? When he died, he took the curse to the grave and he stayed there all night Friday. He stayed in the grave all night and all night Saturday. But if you're a Baptist church, you ought to help me preach this last part. Put your finger over your ear, lean back and say, hey. Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. I got to let you go to the parade. But is there anybody here that can thank God that he didn't put that curse on you? That's why you're still here. Because he didn't curse you in one that you didn't deserve it. But God gave you mercy. And if he gave you grace, if he gave you mercy, say yes. Say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes, yes. He gave me. Another, another chance. Not a second chance. Because many of us messed that chance up in high school. But he gave you 
another. And can I tell y'all? Let me tell y'all something. We all deserve that curse. We all deserve it. But the good news is, God says, I love you so much. Sister Glove, he said, I love you so much that instead of putting that curse on you, I'm going to put it on my, my son. That's why the song says, Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin has left. Crimson stain. And he washed. <sighs> White as snow. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for not putting that curse on us. We deserved it. But thank you that you didn't give us what we deserve. We deserve that curse, but thank you for mercy. God, thank you that you didn't quit on us when we walked away from you. I give your name praise for what you did. God, I pray for somebody in the sanctuary that has some distance between you and themselves. In the name of Jesus. Bring them closer to you. God, let them know that they can't do anything apart from you. Sometimes you navigate our circumstances to bring us just closer to you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. If you receive that word, would you put those hands together? Would you stand with me? You're getting ready to go. I tried. I tried. I tried that. I tried to beat you. I did. I, I tried. I promise. I'm glad I ain't bet you. Uh, I told Reverend Faust I was gonna try to be as short as he was. <laughs> it didn't work. I was doing good until I stood up. <laughs> but I'm sorry. I just. But when you love God's word, sometimes you just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, let's stay. Let's stay. Listen, I don't want to take for granted that we're all saved today. But I want to encourage you, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to come. There may be some distance between you and him. Maybe you're online saying, Pastor, I got to admit, I'm, I'm too far away from God. I can't even feel anything. But can I tell you, you can, you can give your life back to Christ right where you are from home right here in the sanctuary because God never quits on us there is nothing we can do that can outrun the love that God has for us do y'all hear me here that's why we sing this song there's nothing better come on everybody there's, there's nothing, nothing better than knowing Jesus Will you up and turn, and turn your life around. around. Here's my part. You ought to know him. Yeah. Said so get to know him. Get to know him. Said so right now, everybody say. Right now, today. Just come. Just come. Yeah. Listen, maybe somebody's saying, Pastor, I'm already saved. Maybe you're saying that online. I'm already saying. Mobile has some great churches, but the good news is you're standing in one of God's greatest churches. Amen. With a wonderful congregation, a wonderful pastor. We would love to be your church member. I would love to be your pastor. If you need to give your life to Christ, you need to join a church today in the sanctuary, even online. If you need to give your life to Christ, join a church there. You can let us know there. And Ken, here's the message we got to have for you. Listen, there is nothing you can do that stops God from always giving you another chance. And so, and because he's going to give you another chance, here's what I got to tell you. Come on, everybody say it. Say, come on, everybody say, come on, come on.
Listen, let's go ahead and press the case. If you need an offering packet, offering packet, raise your hand. If you need one, raise your hand. If you need one, raise your hand. If you need one, raise your hand. Need one, raise your hand. If not, if not, we're going to point your attentions to the screens. We're going to receive our video announcements, and then we'll go ahead and get you out of here. Amen. Hello, Aimwell family. We're preparing to celebrate our beloved pastor for his pastoral installation. The celebration will begin on Sunday, March 6th, with our very own Emeritus Dr. Michael Jackson as our guest speaker for that weekend. The official installation weekend will be March the 12th through 13th. The installation service will be held on Saturday, March the 12th at 11 a.m. with our guest speaker, Dr. James Anthony Jackson. And finally, on Sunday, March 13th, at 9.30 a.m., we'll have our combination service with a Dr. Maurice Watson. As beautiful as the grace of God be so painful, how can something so wonderful, so effervescent, cause me to hurt so much? Can I illustrate it? Do it. It is like... It is like a husband who wants to show his wife how much he loves her. And so he buys for his wife a box of freshly cut roses wrapped in a bowl. He gives her the box. Her eyes are beaming. Her heart is palpitating. She's excited to get the box. She can hardly untie the bowl fast enough. She opens the box and immediately she sees the beautiful roses and... She could smell the wonderful fragrance. She reaches inside in, in excitement and grabs the roses, but she grabbed them by the stem. Immediately, pain shoots up her arm. Blood begins to gush out of her hand. Something so beautiful and yet something so painful. Now she has a choice. She can say to the rose, Rose, I reject you because you hurt me. You cause me pain. Or she could become angry with her husband and say, Joker, if you really loved me, you would have taken the time to shave these thorns off the stem. But did you know what she does? Surprisingly, she doesn't throw the rose down, nor does she become angry with her husband. She continues to hold the rose by the stem in spite of the pain because she knows that the intent of the giver was not to hurt her but to show her how much he loved her come here let me ask you a question can you hold God by the stem by the stem when a loved one dies by the stem when the doctor says it's cancer by the stem when you're laid off from your job because you know God's intent was never to hurt you but to show you how much he loved you in addition to the weekend services on Saturday, March the 12th, a luncheon is scheduled for our Angwell family, friends, and special guests. The celebration luncheon will be held at the Gulf Quest National Maritime Museum, located at 155 South Water Street at Cooper Riverside Park, Wright Hill in Mobile, Alabama. Ticket prices are only $50 per person. They may be purchased beginning on the first Sunday, February the 6th, 
immediately following the 9.30 a.m. worship service. With space being very limited, please see Mrs. Aquanetta Mixon, Ms. Latonja Heron, or Mrs. Javonda Young-Knight to secure and purchase your tickets as soon as possible. Please join us as we celebrate this historic moment at our church. Back to you, Pastor Trey. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I'm here for another Refresh Project update. And of course, brothers and sisters, in the past, when you wanted to pay your tithes and offerings and various things with your card, there was a card machine that you had to swipe in and all of that kind of stuff. Now, brothers and sisters, we are upgrading our way of giving with our cards. And now I'm pleased to announce that we now have a giving kiosk upstairs in our Grand Central area. And here it is right now. As you can see, it has our logo on it. It is an Apple product. And uh, what you understand, brothers and sisters, is that uh, this allows us to be able to give those of you that may come during the week as well. You can give uh, on this kiosk as well. Also, those of you that may be leaving the sanctuary that, that maybe you forgot your checkbook or didn't bring any cash. You can also still give on your way out of the door at any particular moment during service that you can give. And so we just wanted to add now uh, one additional way. And now we have five ways to give. It's just another way, brothers and sisters, that we can allow you multiple different ways to give to your church family and to be a part of what God is doing here at The Well. Be blessed. Uh, if you are A through H, last name, if you would come to this side. If you are I through P, right here on my left, and then R to Z right here. And then the fourth table is for those who want to pay, make a reservation, or you need to let us know when you plan to pay. Uh, we would really need everyone's monies in. I think we almost sold out, or close to it. But uh, if you still would like to attend, or you have friends and family, even those of you online who would like to attend, please let us know. We still have a few tickets left. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can see me, uh, Mrs. Mixon, Ms. Heron, or certainly Sister Young, who's worshiping with us online. Thank you very much, Pastor. Amen. All right, let's get ready to go. Now, listen, y'all be safe uh, at these parades and all that stuff. Be safe. Wear your mask. Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah, like I just said something else. All right. Yeah, I'm looking out for y'all. <laughs> All right. All right. So listen, make sure you be safe. Uh, amen. Listen, were you blessed today by worshiping the word today? You were? <laughs> listen, we're going to get ready to go. Now, listen, next Sunday, next Sunday, we're kicking off uh, my installation. I'm excited about that. Um, excited we're going to have our pastor emeritus. He's going to be sharing as well as Reverend Faust is going to be sharing too. They're going to be kind of tag teaming that thing uh, next week. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. And so listen to the course on Saturday the 12th will be my actual installation at 11 a.m. here. Uh, listen, and you all, y'all come. I want y'all to come Baptist strong. I need hats and everything. Uh, I want it all. We, we're going we're gonna to have some church. And Dr. James Anthony Jackson is going to be preaching that day. And then, of course, my spiritual father will be coming on that Sunday, Sunday, March the 13th, Dr. Maurice Watson. You've been hearing him. Have these clips been blessing you uh, that we've been sharing with him? And so uh, I'm excited. He can't wait to come. And listen, I want y'all to, I mean, tear this place up. Tear this place up when we when we have in church. I, we believe in having church over here at Aimwell, don't we? Amen. So y'all want y'all to come and be, be here, and we're going to be excited about it. And uh, we'll be able to celebrate uh, what God is doing uh, here in the life of our church. Listen, would you lift your gifts up, lift your gifts up, lift your gifts up, lift your gifts up. We'll repeat out to me and say, Lord, thank you for another opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you've given to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, we're getting ready to go. Get ready to go. Good to see everybody. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, bringing us here safely. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the message, God. Help us to understand that no matter how great the problem, there's grace and mercy for everything we have. It's in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. 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 Section 5, Section 5, and Section 4. You all can leave together. 
section four and five. Go and tell them. Come on. Tell some. Yeah. My faithful too. Go and tell it. Sections four and five. Section three. Section three. God bless you. Section three. Y'all may stand. Let's come on. Come on. Go and tell it. Go and tell it. Go and tell it. Section two and section one. Section one. Section one. Hey Amen. If you got to get your tickets, you can remain seated. Say, go and tell it. Go and tell it. Go and tell it. To tell somebody about Jesus. Oh, go and tell it. To tell somebody, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on. To go and tell it. To tell somebody. We're gonna sing it one more time. One more time. Oh. Come on, to tell somebody. 